There are times that uh, I remember one time Cody and I were going to Havasu. And I don't remember what we were going to go down there for. I don't remember. But we had just come from a fire meeting. Um, and I was dressed in the, in the whole gear. And we were, tr we were driving off to uh, um, Havasu. And I remember we were coming down. We were on I-40 going to Havasu. And we come down through them hills and big, huge cuts. And we come down through there. And just as you get to the end of the cuts, there's a big old right turn. Makes a long turn out there to the flats. And we were coming down there. We got down there close. And there's just people out in the road waving at us. And going, what in the world are these crazy people doing? They're going to run over. Man, they're just waving. And they're just going crazy. Well, I didn't know what was going on. But they were trying to get people to slow down because there had been an accident in the in that lane around the curve, and you couldn't see it until you got around the curve. And if you're doing 75, you're going to have a problem because there was people literally laying right in the middle of the road. And I remember thinking to myself when we got around the corner, I'm thinking, oh, man, this is not what I want. And I I, I got to admit it. I told Cody, I said, oh, there's plenty of help here. They got cops and people. He goes, no, sir. We've got to stop. And I'm like, oh, my heart's not. Because you know what? I didn't want to stop. And I know that's devilish and, and all, but I didn't want to stop. And we stopped, and we did everything we could do to help people. You know, I, you know, there was one poor old boy. He was 14 year old, and he was as big as white, and he was a big old kid. And they were... They were coming east, and something happened to the truck, and she flipped. It was a Dodge, Red Dodge pickup, I believe. She flipped, and there was people all over the truck. I mean, it was loaded. They had people everywhere in there. Well, anyway, somehow or other, it took this 14-year-old kid, and it threw him out. And it threw him all the way across the median, all the way across the other highway, clear out to the fence on the other side of the freeway. And he hit the dirt out there. And he was in torturous pain. I felt horrible. We got there and his arms all just, well, it's a mess. Those are the kind of days, you know, you you just pray for people because you don't want to touch them because they're in such, I remember trying to, we had to, we had to get him up and get him to the hospital. And I remember we rolled him over, got him up on the stretcher, and he was just in agony. Oh, come on, help me here. He was going, he was just, he was tough. But he was hurting because his arm was just a mess. We finally got him on that stretcher. And I was doing everything I could to hold his arm just as still as I could to get him up there. We got him on the stretcher and they finally got all of it cleared out. And we picked up all their stuff and cleaned up everything and they took off. Sometimes it's not convenient to be neighborly. Do you know that? Sometimes it's not even fun to be neighborly. Sometimes it's not really my, you know, uh, some, you know I, uh, I asked the Lord sometimes, I said, Lord, you know what? I want to be the kind of person that uh, can reach out to people. I don't want to be selfish. I don't want to be, you know. Sometimes I wonder, should you just help people every time? And I don't know. I don't have an answer for you. I just know that, you know, we need to be careful to be neighborly. To love your neighbor. Neighbor, the Bible says, to love your neighbor as yourself. And, you know, what I'm trying to say tonight is your neighbor is not just people in the church. Your neighbor is not just your neighbor, your next door neighbor. Your neighbor could be whoever. You know what I'm saying? That's what this guy did. The old the uh, Samaritan, he didn't know who this guy was. He had no clue. But you know what? He went so far as to go and help the guy, get him and put him on his donkey, and take him to the first inn he came to, put him in there, and tell the old boy, listen, take good care of him, and I'm giving you these two pence. And he says, if it costs more, I'll come back and pay the difference. I'm sure everybody here has done that. We've all helped people. We've all done what we can do. And I'm just encouraging you tonight that you know, uh, uh, sometimes I was talking about being partial or having respect unto people this morning for people, you know, this morning uh, in, in what we were talking about. And we've got to remember that, uh, you know, uh, uh, of all the people that should have helped this old boy, it should have been a priest or it should have been the Levite. I mean, they were, they were in the priesthood. They were the people that they should have helped him. How many of you know we are all priests before God? We're, we're priests, we're sons and daughters of God. And here comes the Samaritan who were thought of as dogs by the Jew. And he comes along and the Bible says this certain man came from Jerusalem. So he probably was a Jew. And the Samaritan goes out of his way to help him. And I'm telling you this tonight. We need to, we need to, uh, I like what Dave Hogan said one time. He says, you know what? I always make it a point 
just in a random place. He said, we'll be in a grocery store. And he said, just out of the blue, he said, the Lord might just tap on my heart and say, I want you to help this person. He said, I don't have a clue who these people are. I've never seen them again before, and I'll probably never see them again. He said, and so I'll get right up in front of them, and I'll say, you know what, ma'am, or uh, sir? He said, the Lord just spoke to me to buy all your groceries. And so he says, man, I just, he said, they put them through there, and he said, they pulled mine through there, and he said, I paid for all of them. That's David. Now that person, I don't know. I don't know anything about the people, and Dave don't either. He just said, I just believe when God says to do it, do it. The other day, this is the craziest thing I've ever had happen. Never had this happen. We were down in Pizza Hut, me and Cody. And were you there, Wade? Yeah. Just a bunch of us in there. I knew our bill was going to be healthy. Our bill was going to be very healthy. Well, there was a guy sitting in the back back there, and he had a couple of kids. And we struck up a conversation with him, and we visited with him a little bit. And uh, I told him, I said, man, I'm impressed. You, you're doing a good job with these two boys here. And we talked for probably 20 minutes. And got ready to leave, and the, the waitress came and brought us our bill. He goes, hey, come here. So I went over there. And he called the waitress. I'm sorry. He called the waitress. He said, come here. He said, I'm not going to let that old boy pay for that. He said, I'm going to pay for it. I said, sir, I don't even know you. He said, you know what? I don't want no argument. He said, I'm going to pay your bill. I said, well, let me warn you, it's expensive. He goes, I know. This place is not cheap. He said, but I'm going to pay your whole ticket. Man, that's neighborly, buddy. Yeah. Of all the people that are out there, we are the people. You know, uh, I remember when somebody was telling us about Hurricane Katrina down there in the Gulf. You know, the government pumps up FEMA and they say this and they say that, but they're worthless. They're no good. The government in general will just waste our money. They don't get the job done. And you know who mostly took care of those people? The churches. The churches from all over the country, they sent thousands and thousands and thousands of dollars in food, in, in clothing, in blankets, and everything you can imagine. They sent down there. And I, I talked to Dave Hogan, spent, what, two months there with his whole crew when this happened, and then I talked to Bill Easter, and he went down, and I talked to a lot of different people through fire departments that have gone down there and spent, they spent weeks and months down there, and they said that FEMA would, would they hardly even showed up, and when they did, they didn't want to offer no help much, it was mostly just churches and church people, and they'd build these big tents, and they'd feed people, and they'd clothe people, they'd help. did you know that's the responsibility we need? That's what we're supposed to do. We don't need FEMA, we don't need, we need the church to stand up, we need to be neighborly. And I know that, you know, we all have been, and I'm not preaching to anybody who hasn't. I'm just encouraging you in this, in this time. And, you know, I believe that as the days go by, uh, we're going to get more opportunity to be more, more neighborly. And people are going to be needing more, and, help, and you're going to have to help more. I'm telling you, there's a lot of people, um, there's a lot of people out there that, um, it may be America, but they're not in good shape. They're in bad shape. It's, it's, it's scary to me how many people have lost their homes. You talk about losing their homes, losing this, losing that. It's gone. It's done. I can't do nothing about it because the economy is tanking. And that's why it's, uh, I think it's a great idea for us as a people and us as a church to be prepared, to be ready. Because I want to tell you something. When people are hungry, they'll listen to you. And when people are hungry and you have compassion, it'll make a difference. I told you about that guy we went and prayed for at the hospital the other day. Let me tell you something. Just the fact that we went up there and we prayed for him and showed him compassion, it changed his heart. And it woke him up. Man, that's a cheap way to win people. I was in Kingdom anyway. All I had to do was drive over. And I didn't even drive. Cody took me over there. And we just laid hands on him and prayed for him. And he was impressed with our concern and the care we showed and now he's ready to come to Bible study. You know what? I'll, pop, I'll bet you $100 it won't be long we'll have him saved. All because of one act of just simply going over there. We can, be, we can be neighborly. Who is my neighbor? The lawyer said. He said, well, Jesus told him. He says, well, you know what? Or I mean, the, the, the lawyer said, well, you know what? It must be the guy that showed mercy. And so what am I saying? I'm saying this. I'm saying that... Knowing or don't know, they're all your neighbors. 